This is a portable power station. It is the PPS 2000 from Bridna. It is essentially a large battery with a set of inputs on the front, USB, DC, AC, and a set of inputs uh, power in here on the side. Now the PPS 2000 comes with a solar panel. It is well over six feet long. So you can set this up outside. It comes with a built-in cable that you will use. It's connected here. And the only challenge to this cable is a short length. Now, the battery itself is not designed to be left outside. It's not waterproof. So that means realistically, in order to use this, I'm going to have to set this in my driveway right outside the garage door and then connect it here to the power station. Right here is where I connect the cable from the solar panels to the power station. Now you can already, when it's plugged in, you can already hear the fans that are running. Input is on this side. There's an output fan on that side. And here then is the digital display panel, which lets you know that this is currently charging. The input is 144 watts. Currently, this is at 79% of its capacity. One place that a portable power station can be handy is if you're at a job site someplace doing a little bit of construction, you need some power tools, but you don't have any power there yet. Perhaps you're out back building a shed or making an addition to it. In these cases, you can plug your saws uh, right into the power station. Then make sure you just press uh, AC so that you're getting power to the AC switches. And then... No problem. And once you've made a big mess, you've got sawdust everywhere, no problem. You can clean it off. A more common use, perhaps, for a power station is for when the power goes out. Well, the portable power station, like this one from Bridna, can be used to power all sorts of things that you might need at home. Here, for example, is a small space heater that I got. Perhaps I need to heat uh, a small room in my house while we're without power. Lots of nice heat coming out of here from this. Or perhaps something like you need to make coffee or you need to make a cup of tea. And uh, we can simply put this guy in here and then tell this to go ahead and start boiling the water. Now something that you definitely want to pay attention to is the required power. How many watts each of these devices is capable of. Uh, little small space heaters like this one take about 1500 watts. This kettle takes about 1500 watts. The average uh, coffee maker takes about the same. So I can't have two or three of these things all plugged in at the same time. Yes it is. There it is. Boiling nicely, ready for a hot cup of tea, hot chocolate, or whatever I need on a day when the power's out and it's cold. Now for me, the primary reason to have a portable power station is if the power goes out and stays down for a few days, what am I going to do with the items that are in my refrigerator and my freezer? So I need this portable power station to be out in the garage. I need the solar panels to constantly be recharged charging it. So at this point, I have the solar panels and I have the bridge net connected to a long power cable, an extension cable, and I have that running here in my garage to the uh, spare fridge and it is connected to that. So the good news is it is working. It is both simultaneously withdrawing power and charging. Now, the bad news is these solar panels are currently inputting 140 some watts while my fridge is outputting close to 500. What this means is that the solar panels are not going to be able to keep up, is that I would need to run the fridge for a few hours, keep the door closed, and um, then let the, the solar panel catch the battery back up. 
and then I could run the fridge for a couple hours and just kind of alternate back and forth. So once again, this is a portable power station, the PPS 2000 from Bridna.